now present For the Record. Welcome to For the Record. I'm Neil Nichols. The list of retiring state lawmakers continues this week, with Senate Minority Leader Janet Bewley announcing she won't run for re-election this fall. First elected to the Assembly in 2010, she served in the Senate since 2015 and as leader since 2020. Now she's the next in a line of party leaders announcing plans to step away, including Assembly Majority Leader Jim Steinecke and Minority Leader Gordon Hintz, who relinquished his leadership role but hasn't said yet whether he'll run again. Senator Bewley joins me now to talk about her decision. Thank you so much for joining me today. Well, thank you for having me. Now, you entered politics after a full career. What made you want to and why leave now? Well, I had been serving on the Ashland City Council, which is obviously a local and somewhat of a, of a smaller uh, seat to hold. But I found out kind of late in life that I absolutely loved serving in office. I, I There was something about it that just sort of rang true for me. And then when uh, Gary Sherman uh, announced that he was not going to run for re-election to the Assembly, I took that chance to uh, run for Assembly and I won and then went on and on. But by the way, I ran in 2010. So you can imagine what uh, I ended up with as the, that rookie. Um, I got kind of thrown into the deep end of the pool, but it was, it's was it been a wonderful, wonderful uh, career. Yeah, 2010, that was quite a year in the state legislature. What was that <laughs> like does. starting then? Well, actually, you know, it was kind of exciting. And so in, in a very odd way, it sort of took some of the, uh, I don't want to say the pressure off, but the learning curve was huge for everybody because of the things that we were dealing with. It was not business as usual. And we had to summon all sorts of uh, courage and creativity. And it we, were, we became a, a group, a very tight group, very quickly. And so I, in a way, once I got in, um, they treated me like I was a pro, like I was a veteran. And we just, we just got it done as well as we possibly could under those circumstances. The Democratic caucus chose you in April 2020, meaning your leadership in the Senate has essentially spanned the length of the pandemic. Now, how did that influence your role? Um, again, it, it just was what was what it was. So I just had to take it and, and get it done that way. And of course, everybody else was dealing with those same things. Um, it was a tumultuous time. Um, I came in um, rather quickly. I was pleased and proud that my caucus chose me. And uh, ever since, we've been doing it by this, this new set of protocols. And um, who's to say, had, would it be any different? Um, I, I don't think so when it comes to my style of leadership, to the way the caucus responded to um, all issues. Um, I think it was just a matter of, we, we had no choice. We just did it and we did it to the best of our ability. Now, you did come under some criticism for joining Republicans and voting for the most recent state budget. Did you end up regretting that decision later? No, I didn't. Um, you know, the, the budget is a compromise. There were things in it that I, I appreciated. There were certainly some things that I didn't. But we had to move forward. I, uh, I had a lot of respect and communication with Governor Evers at the time. Um, there was, it, we needed to be able to continue to move forward. I wanted to be able to work with the Republicans as best as I could to meet the needs of the people uh, of my district and of the entire state without losing our integrity and our and without um, missing any of the values that we have always uh, depended upon as Democrats. And I think that that vote sort of represented that. Absolutely. Now, looking back at your career, your career in the legislature, what's the biggest moments? Um, I, I think it, it was getting uh, oriented to being in the minority uh, and the fact that it's a very proud and important role to play. Um, when I was uh, first, when, when all, everything sort of fell apart and a reporter asked me, how does it feel to be irrelevant? I immediately responded with this, this surge of, of optimism and responsibility. And I said, I don't think I've ever been more relevant in my life in terms of representing the minority in a country, in a democracy, where the rights and the participation of the minority are critical 
to making it work. We are not a one party, a one person uh, uh, democracy. We are, we have a government that re represents and is responsible to all people. And I am truly very proud of the fact that I kept uh, our, our democracy sound. I pushed to have the voice of the minority represented strongly um, without, without, you know, a lot of um, uh, blaming or, or, or uh, shirking of the responsibility to keep looking forward. And I hope that uh, in, in the balance, I'll be judged as having done that. If Republicans take the governor's house this year, this fall, and there's no sign that the legislature is going to flip party control from Republicans right now, what would you tell Democrats going forward? What advice would you, you leave them? With? You, just, you just keep going. You know, um, history is written by people who don't give up. Um, I, you know, the, the stories of, of, of defeat and then success, you know, the, the, the people at the barricades, the, um, the conditions under which George Washington continued to fight in the American Revolution, his battle cry, his, his inner strength came from, I keep going every day because we're not going to lose. You just keep going and you go, keep going and then eventually after losing battles, you win the war. And that's what I'm dedicated to, and that's what I know Democrats are gonna continue to do. Keep going forward, looking at the values uh, of the people of our state and our country, and never, ever, ever giving up. All right, Senator, thank you so much, and good luck as you finish your term. Thank you very much.